Oh my goodness. Oh what my have, goodness. Oh my have goodness. We just <laughs> Vera Vera King Coley does it again for RCB. Stick around because we're gonna talk about it. Hello, welcome back to the Cricket Nerds Podcast. It's me, Zach, joined by James and Benj, the fellow nerds, and we're bringing you the last three games that have happened in the IPL. And it's, again, like we say every time, it's getting really close in the table. Any, well, not any teams, there's a few less teams that can qualify now. Um, but we've got three games we're going to talk about. The first game, Lucknow Super Giants versus Mumbai Indians. And Lucknow's win was pretty much down to Marcus Stoinis with the groinis. Um, he, he was the one who won the game for, for LSG so <laughs> I thought we should talk call, about that I thought we just called him Marcus Groinis rather than any of the other things <laughs> I don't know right I, I, to be honest I, I, I don't have any comment on, on his groin <laughs> but um, yes <laughs> he played very well uh, it, it was it was outstanding from from luck now um, to, to be able to recover from the horrendous position that every other batter got them in, yeah. Like Huda, De Kock, Mankad, Pandya, and Puran, none of them managed to strike above one twenty. Mm. Um, and in our midweek village team, you know that's the kind of we reward each other with fantasy points if we strike above one twenty. So like it's a very low bar. And nobody managed to get above it apart from Stoinis. And I mean, it's a pretty high bar in the village team. Like, if Zach's above one ten, then that's normally you know. I mean, yeah, that, that's that's world ending. <laughs> but, um, but you know, he doesn't have the groin of Stoinis and yeah. gets, eight gets caught on the it, boundary off a no ball. <laughs> yeah, it's the 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 strength that Stoinis has just to muscle the ball over. Um, it. It showed, and on on what turned out to be a, a relatively difficult pitch, <laughs> mm. um, he he did really really well, and he he kind of justified why he was that like, because uh, he was a pre auction pick before the mega auction, um, before Lucknow had ever played. Stoinis was one of those pre auction picks, and it was good to see him kind of repay that a bit. Yeah, he's such he's such a valuable player with bat ball field. Yeah. He provides the full package, and and he's he's there for a reason. And when you look at the rest of the team's boundaries, he faced forty seven balls and hit twelve boundaries. The rest of the team in the other seventy three deliveries only hit five boundaries, mm. which shows how valuable his contribution was. Um, and we've seen how well Mumbai Indians have chased this season. And on a difficult pitch, the way look now we'll get we're going. They weren't going to be scoring much, much more than one fifty. But yeah. Stoinis yeah. just provided the extra bit that they needed to just beat Mumbai because it was close in the end. I mean, the way Ishan Kishan and Rohit Sharma were going at the start, I thought Mumbai are going to do this in their sleep. It's going to be easy, especially with Sky to come, Wajera, who's been doing really well, Tim David, Cameron Green. I just thought it's game over. But look now, bowled very well. Yeah, and, and you know what I think it was as well was um it was the eighteenth over off Chris Jordan that went for five boundaries off the over, three fours and two sixes. So, you know, classic Chris Jordan giving away twenty four off one over. Um in his 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 true style in T twenty and somehow England still see him as their number one death bowler. He does all right for England. It's just the other teams. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes yeah. it does all right. But um, I did think that Mumbai chased very valiantly. Um, it was interesting to see Cameron Green dropped all the way down uh, to number seven. Um, yeah, as, as a finisher that he, he didn't really work, did he? Yeah. Um, I, I, I think... Mumbai almost suffered from a mild case of Punjab syndrome where <laughs> they decided they just don't know where they need to bat certain players that you would think have a relatively well-defined position. So Cameron Green, I feel like we've established at this point that he does well when he bats at three. 
Mm. Like that that is the position that you should be playing him in. Um and you know, Sky has done very well at four, so you don't necessarily need to change that. Um he's done well at three, but it's not like four's been a foreign position for him. Mm. So yeah, for, for somebody like Cameron Green, who has been so, he's been really useful this tournament when he's coming earlier, mm. to then sticking down at seven and for him to not be able to, you know, get over the line. Uh, that, I mean, that 20th over was absolutely brilliant. Yeah, but, um, yeah incredibly well bowled. Yeah, it, was, it was a shame to see Cameron Green not be able to finish it off if you're a Mumbai fan. Um, but, you know, most in Khan, hats off to him. To, mm. you, you got to have a very clear head to defend eleven against two of Australia's biggest stars at the moment. I think they needed uh, thirty from the last two overs, and when I saw Naveen or Hook come on to bowl the nineteenth over, I thought he's been doing really well all season. He's not going to go for more than fifteen, and then whoever they bowled the last over won't go for more than fifteen. But Tim David was striking the ball very well and it doesn't matter which bowler he comes up against and he smashed Naveen all over the place. So for Mohsin Khan, who's not really had the same season as he had last season. I mean, last season, he, I was mentioning him every game as being just underrated and doing incredibly well. But for him to come and just bowl that over as he did, yeah, it was, was really impressive from him um, and, and will, will mean good things for the future for him moving forward. That won't go unnoticed, I don't think. Yeah, I'd love that ability to just hit that Yorker in those mm. those death overs. You know, no stranger to bowling the the key death pressure overs, uh, but that ability to hit the Yorker is is definitely something that all the best death bowlers in the world have, and 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 Motion Khan um, demonstrated. Um, yeah. Speaking of bottling it, uh, Punjab. <laughs> What? <laughs> what happened there? Straight to the point. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah. Uh, let's let's yeah let's talk about Punjab. I guess we have to. Um, it's once again a story of the disappointing bowlers. And look, mm. I I predicted at the start that we'd finish sixth. Turns out that might be a bit optimistic of me. Um, it was. Yet again, a really disappointing performance from Punjab. We've got all the pieces. We're just not putting them in the right place. Mm. Um, and we're not using them in the right way. So, um, you know, I, I thought we started off pretty well in the power play with, with our bowling. But it was just a bit too short. Like, we weren't really challenging any edges. It was just Kagisa Rabada was kind of beating up Prithvi Shaw with some short deliveries. But other than that, there was no no issues. Delhi did they did get quite lucky because um, every ball that they were miscuing was either going for boundaries or landing in no man's land, and it's one of those kind of frustrating power plays for Punjab. But they just seemed like a team without a clear plan mm. and without defined uh, roles for their bowlers as well as their batters. And for like, yeah, what on earth is Harpreet Bra doing bowling the last over? Like that, that epitomizes a team that you just don't really know what to do with them. And then, you know, when you've got Arshdeep Singh on, who's only bowled two overs um, and he's not bowling the last, yeah, or, and Kagisa Rabada, it's just, it's confusing to me. Yeah. I, I'm not I sure I understand it. And we deserve to lose if we're going to make those decisions. Um, I know that Ar Harpreet Bra bowls at the death for his um his team Punjab um in in the side Mushtaqali trophy that that's kind of his role and I know he bowled really well in the last in the last game but but I agree with you James I mean Ashdeep Singh who's renowned for his death bowling Kigi Sarabada I, I, it's just looking at Punjab's bowling this season it's such a shame because Rahul Chahar he's experienced in the IPL he's a great spinner he's been on and off this season um, Kagisa Rabadi, you'd normally bank on him being one of the highest wicket takers in the tournament. He's not been. Sam Curran has come off the back of a great year in 2020 cricket, not been that effective. And Arshdeep Singh has been one of the best death bowlers in 2020 cricket for the last year, again, hasn't been effective. And that's the thing that hurts really for Punjab fans is the fact that these players who you can bank on as being consistent performers haven't been consistent performers. 
Uh, and if you take those Punjab bowlers and you, they perform at their best, it's a completely different team and they're winning them the tournament. Um, and I think that's that's the shame, really. What did you yeah. think about the uh, retire out at the end of the 15th over? Um, so this is in the Punjab innings mm. where, you know, Punjab chasing, I think we needed 214. And um, yeah, because obviously we lost Shikha Dhawan early and Ty Day, he was hitting some nice shots, but he, you could tell he was really struggling to hit it, hit it far and accelerate. And in the end, yeah, he had to retire out. And I, I, I honestly think he just he needs to do it like two overs earlier. I, he needed to do it closer to sort of the twelfth over, um, because he was really, really struggling to to accelerate. And it was not a bad pitch. That mm. needs to be said. Two hundred and fourteen was a chaseable total, especially against this Delhi lineup, especially against the fielding that we faced. And Delhi had one of the, like, they gave us every opportunity. They tried to lose. <laughs> they really did try to lose. Like, yeah. um, th there were a few drops. There was some horrendous misfields. They, 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 they gave their level best for their Punjab neighbours. And yet they, Punjab still couldn't seize it. The only person that really put their hand up was Liam Livingston, who played an absolutely outstanding knock. And took it right to the last over, where even in the last over, all hope was lost. And then Ishant Sharma bowls, bowls a no ball that goes for six. And you're thinking, oh, another lifeline. And then, you know, he bowls well again and, and Livingston can't get over the line. So it's it's uh, it's annoying. I was saying it's, it's interesting with, with Ty Day because, like, he was, again, striking at 130, which... We wouldn't say it's a bad strike rate if you look at his innings holistically, but just at the time and, and in the game situation, yeah, for sure. With players like Jitesh Sharma, Sharat Khan, Sam Curran in the shed, who can all hit the ball far, it definitely seems sensible for him to to go and, 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 and for those guys to come out. It was just a shame that none of them could actually execute that and and give Livingston that support that he needed because if there was just somebody else who was finding um you know a boundary and over and then rotating the strike back to Livingston that that would have really really helped Punjab there in that chase I would I would have argued to keep tied it in and the reason for that is because we've seen him strike okay in the tournament in previous games uh, and he was in he, he faced 42 balls before he was retired out. And yes, he might have not been striking it at the strike rate they needed. But I reckon if he'd have stayed for the last five overs, with Livingston striking the way he was, it kind of takes the pressure off Tider. And he could have probably joined in with that ball striking later on. Like if, if you were sending someone else out to face the last ball, would you send Sharat Khan, who's not faced a ball all game, or would you send out... Tider who's faced 42 balls like if you had to make that decision I would always pick the person who's faced the most balls um, if obviously they have to be a decent batsman which Tider is and we've seen him bat well um, so I, I don't know I think it's the, the confidence that Tider would have had from having faced more balls maybe I don't know it's, it's, a, it's an interesting argument I guess um, so definitely yeah, leave your thoughts I, in the comments I, th I think we do have the thing is there are players that can go from ball one like I think I mm. would actually back Jitesh Sharma to hit a six first ball mm. more than Tide in the in the four in, in the way that he was hitting it in that game. Like you could tell he was getting frustrated. He knew that there were better players and more explosive players yet to come. And he wanted to accelerate and he just couldn't. Mm -hmm. And I just think that decision should have been made a little bit earlier for Punjab to have a chance. Yeah. I just want to say go on. I do think with Delhi Capitals, I, th I think they the way they've changed their mindset this tournament, the, the last few games, it's been less about building an innings around David Warner. It's just been how many boundaries can we hit in our innings? And I think that way of playing is, serves their batter so well. You've got Prithvi Shaw, he's a boundary striker. Riley Rousseau, boundary striker. Phil Salt, they're looking for these fours and sixes. So just mm. give them that opportunity to do it. And CSK should be scared for that last game bench. Nah, 
we've got this. <laughs> um, I was impressed though by Amrit Norkir actually returning into the team. Um, I think it was a brave move of Delhi to leave out Mitch Marsh, who's been such a core part of their team so far. Um, yeah. But I think it was the right call. I think, you know, stopping that Australian nepotism um, from David Warner and actually leaving him out, bringing Pritby Shaw and, and Amrit Norkir back in, I think was fantastic because Norkir picked up two massive wickets in Jitesh Sharma and Sam Curran. And it really turned the tide in, in that chase because if those two players had got in and if if Sam Curran had hit, you know, like a, a 20 off eight type of innings that we know that he can, it would have been really, really dangerous. But Zach, I know you've been dying to speak about it all day. King Coley ties Chris Gale for the number of centuries in the IPL. Zach, talk us through, first of all, the bowling innings. Just talk us about, talk to us about RCB. Oh, it's great. I mean, we're, we're in a really good position in terms of our, our game is right at the end. And so if we win that game, then there is a good chance that we qualify. And otherwise, it would just be a case of we need to get a good net run rate to qualify. So it all comes down to our performance in the last game, which I think is the best best way for it to be. Um, and obviously, if results go our way, then it kind of takes the pressure off in that last game. Uh, so we've done really well to win our last two games. But I think it's been the manner in which we've won these last two games. Um, Siraj had a few quiet games, but the last two games he's played against Rajasthan and also this game, I thought the way he bowled this game, even though he's had such a good tournament, was the best I've seen him bowl. He bowled so well in the power play. And that last over he bowled uh, just to to seal out that innings, to stop Sunrisers from posting that that 200 score um, was really good for him. Um, there were a few questionable decisions, I thought, from RCB's bowlers. For example, deciding to bowl Shabazz Ahmed and Khan Sharma toward the end rather than someone like Michael Bracewell, who was having a quiet game. Um I don't know. There were a few few interesting decisions. So I don't know what your guys' thoughts are on that. Yeah, I thought that it was definitely an interesting one. Bracewell seemed like he was bowling well. Mm. Um, and But that being said, Heinrich Klaassen, <laughs> who yeah. has consistently been the only mm. good Sunrisers player, he was... I don't think you, anybody could have bowled significantly well against him. Um, he was absolutely outstanding. Like the the ease at which he struck an amazing century at a strike rate of over two hundred, mm. and it 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 was the ease that was the most amazing thing. It looked yeah, so sense. simple for him, um, and you you can tell when a batsman has just got a completely clear head, and he was batting like a a free man, and it was it was very very entertaining to see. Probably not if you're a, an RCB fan. Probably the, like the worst sight in the world. But um, if you're a more neutral fan, it's incredible to watch. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, I think it was ridiculous for Bracewell to only get two overs. Like, if 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 we if I'm captaining someone and they've got two overs, two wickets for thirteen, you keep them on for the whole spell. You don't mess around with combinations and all that nonsense. You keep them on because they'll pick up wickets. Just why they held him back, I I, I I have no idea. Because actually, that probably pushed some riser score to a bit higher than it should have been, really. I think the reason why they um, bowled Bracewell early against Abhishek Sharma being a left-hander, um, Bracewell being a right, right-handed right bowler, um, whereas for when Heinrich Klaas, Klaasen was batting, him being a right-handed batter turned the ball away, you'd look to Khan Sharma and Shabazz Ahmed. So I think that was the thinking behind it. However, it comes back to the, would you rather bowl Shane Warne bowling the ball into a batsman or or would you rather have, I don't know, Glenn Maxwell but, turning the ball away? You, Is you, it, you pick yeah. the better player for you the bowl situation, your best, right? You bowl your best yeah. bowler. I say it over and over again. You bowl your best bowler. And I don't think, yeah. think they did. Um, and no. I think, fortunately, they were rescued by the absolute genius of Virat Kohli and Faf Duplessis and if Faf Duplessis still played international cricket this South Africa team that is currently going around is looking very scary for the World Cup that's coming up 
with Heinrich yeah. Klaassen in form, and the likes of Norkir and Rabada playing well, Riley Russo striking it. It's a scary white ball team for South Africa, but it's all good. Fatty Pussy's retired. So it <laughs> he was hasn't fun- actually retired well, from T20s, but they true. just, yeah, South African politics, what are you going to do? He's, he's not there, but King Coley, Zach, I know you've been done to talk about it. What was it? Go on. Oh, it was just amazing to watch, really. I, uh, the thing that really impressed me was the intent with which he scored at. In the last, since 2020, there was a stat that said since 2020, in the middle overs, Coley's been striking at 117. And we've noted it countless times in our podcast, the amount of smelly innings Coley's played where he just slowed down after the first six. But he just kept going. Um, He just continued that intent and he really accelerated through those middle overs to basically put the game to bed. It meant that there wasn't much for Maxwell and Bracewell to do at the end. Normally, when we've seen RCB have these really good starts from Coley and Dupasee, one of them's gone out and the momentum's just gone. Um, and, and we haven't been able to continue. Whereas because they kept that intent going, because Coley got to that 100 off 63 balls and it wasn't a 70 off 63 balls, it meant that we weren't relying on the rest of them to, to do something spectacular. So it was really impressive. And Faf Dupasee, I think he's hit over 40 in his last six innings. And that consistency... It's just ridiculous, and it's so good um, as an he's, RCB supporter. He's, he's carried RCB. You know, mm. you, you can say it quite comfortably that yeah. without Faf being in the form that he's in, RCB wouldn't be where they are. Mm. And it, if you contrast that with the performance of other teams, a lot of the time it only really takes one batter to be in, you know, outstanding form. And then, you know, you will get your your odd player chipping in now and then. But the, those top order runs, they make all the difference. Like, imagine if David Warner was in the same form as Faf Duplessis. Mm. I imagine Delhi Capital would be, well, they'd still be in the running right now. Um, if they'd played uh, Heinrich Klaassen right from the start, Sunrisers would probably be in a better position. Mm. Uh, but what you know, did they we say? What do we say about hiring class and batting at the four? Yes. Yeah. Well, everybody should listen to the cricket nerds. That's that's, that's, that's listen, the solution, li- isn't listen it? Listen to the cricket nerds. You'll score a century. You'll average over 50 with the bat, not the ball. And you'll average under 20 with the ball. Easy. Listen to the cricket nerds. Uh, boys, we do have some CNQs. Uh, we have one from NSN5564 that says, CNQ, why no CNQ, lads? We have CNQs. Next question. <laughs> um, but 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 it was it was not responding to his previous question. Ah, we uh, on the previous video, which was I'm assuming you're in the UK somewhere. How do you watch the IPL? We watch it on Sky, but we're very worried about next year because it's going to get moved to the zone. I think it is. So basically, we have to spend a lot of money. <laughs> That's the solution. Um, yeah. And then we so have... what we need is for you guys to. Um allow us to go to india to watch it live <laughs> yeah yeah subscribe let us grow let us grow then we can get yeah. a sponsor who can pay for us to go to india meet you all have some good biryani and watch some games pay for us to take four months because that's how long the ipl seems to last off work and just watch yeah. the ipl <laughs> anyway um so there are two other questions actually uh, there's one about what do we think about the impact player rule now um, after we've watched a whole season pretty much of the IPL with the impact player rule. James. Yeah, I, I, oh, or Zach, you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was just going to say, I, I mentioned briefly the fact that the impact player rule um, is kind of evolved at the start of the tournament. The impact player was doing absolutely nothing. Um it was it was doing the opposite of providing that impact. It was a negative impact. Whereas as we've gone through the tournament, we've seen the impact player have a much bigger role and, and do a lot better. So I don't know if there's been a, a confidence or or more thought has gone into the impact player rule, but I've actually quite enjoyed it. There you go. I have I've, too. I've, I think it's been all right. Um, I still, um, I, I don't like it for the principle that it removes importance on all rounders um because what you do is you remove a bowler and you get a batter in or vice versa 
Uh, so, you know, the, the need for a genuine all-rounder in a team and part-time bowlers is vastly diminished. And you don't see as much part-time bowling now um, in the IPL. I think going forward, if uh, if they want to continue it and want to continue the quality of the IPL and to improve it, then using the impact player but having five overseas would be my recommendation for the IPL. And I think that would make it, um, <coughs> yeah, just a lot better. But there we go. And then last seeing cue comes from Ramav87, who says, when a player is playing a stinker of a knock, do you think the opposition should purposely make sure they stay in for as long as possible? Like deliberately not appealing for LBWs, drop a sitter, only attempts run out at the other end. Against guys like KL Rahul, where strike rate doesn't matter. Uh, well, so, sorry, KL, strike rate doesn't matter, Rahul. This could be a winning strategy, in my opinion. Um, um, just think about that, boys. Well, I've just, I just thought about um, something I saw the other day where it, it was LSG played a game about a year ago, and Quinton de Kock and Kara Hall scored a two hundred and ten run partnership, mm. and Quinton de Kock hit one hundred and forty off seventy balls, uh, and Kara Hall's contribution was about sixty <laughs> off fifty balls. And it's like maybe the team was purposefully keeping Kara Hall in because if the other players did come in, like Marcus Stoinis, for example, who knows what they could have scored. Um, so yeah, maybe that's what DC were doing against um, Tidy. They were just yeah, keeping maybe. him in because he wasn't striking it well. And Kara Hall <laughs> won't retire himself out. That's the other thing too. But yeah, yeah um, that's well, that's that's it for today, I think. Um, yeah, it, it for me, it's a little bit against the spirit of the game, deliberately not getting someone out because the other team can always retire them out if if they want to. But I, I, I would always try and get someone out. I think the the only thing I of, of that list that I think is okay is um prioritizing which end you want to get a run out for mm. because that makes sense. That's just tactics. Like you want to get the, the the better batter out. So that makes sense. That's fine. But yeah, I'd always appeal for LBWs always not never out. never drop catches on purpose all that sort of stuff <laughs> because you know you, don't don't screw your bowler over like that that's out of order fancy points as well that's, yeah, that's if you, that's if fancy you points. yeah if you ever play with benji you know you'll have a loud appeal from deep backward square leg so <laughs> <laughs> all good well that's been it's been a great podcast thank you everyone for watching um last game week of the IPL still Every option is there apart from Gujarat will probably, well, will definitely finish top and will be qualified. But every other qualification spot, I think, is set up for grabs. Like and subscribe. Follow us on all the social medias. Follow us, uh, all the descriptions in the link tree. All the information is in the link tree in the description. And then listen to our podcast elsewhere. Keep supporting and we'll keep bringing you some great content. There's great cricket this year. Looking forward to the Ashes soon, which will be uh, extremely fun. But yeah, that's all we have time for and we'll see you next time.